Hey there, it's Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips, tools, and resources for college instructors, along with EdTech tutorials. So if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe below. Uh, today is kind of a part two of a video just for Mac users. I already had the one about using QuickTime along with Loom and Zoom to create a DIY whiteboard and a DIY dot cam. Today I'm talking about iMovie, which is also obviously um, Apple specific, Mac specific. And so it's gonna be a very brief tutorial, but it's just a few ideas of how you can use this tool for your online teaching when you're creating video lessons. So it doesn't have to be actual video, it can be just images that you do a voiceover for. But basically, you know, just really quick, you know, a few tips. I had a few that I already said in this other video about five tools to consider. I'll link that one below. But this one will be just about, you know, iMovie, so you don't have to think about the other ones that I mentioned, like Kahoot and Loom and Zoom. Okay, so we'll go ahead and show my screen and give you some sense of how you can use iMovie in your teaching. Okay, so here's what iMovie looks like once you start a new project. And so once you open iMovie, you just click you know, create new movie and this screen will pop up. And I already have uh, this first image here about favorite Loom Pro features. But then I can show you very quickly you know, on the screen how you would add uh, media to a movie that you're creating and it's basically a click and drag kind of function where you go to your documents or your downloads you click what you want to put in and then you just drag it into um, the movie timeline either before or after what's already there it's very simple to drag and drop and move around once you have it in here similarly you know so I have here two images and so you'll notice here that when you play it it has this effect it's called the Ken Burns effect where you're moving in and moving out. So the first thing I want to do is change that. So I click, I can click both. So I click this one so it has a yellow outline. Shift, click the other one. So that's one way of doing it. Or let me click out, you can click and drag. And then obviously those are both yellow as well. And so I can go here to the cropping and rather than Ken Burns, I click fit. And so the whole image will be saved and it won't move. You can also do crop to fill, and that, as you can see here, now you can crop it to whatever size you need it to be if you only want to have a certain part of the image shown. But I'm going to click fit, click enter, so that's done. So now when it plays, it just has the image static on the screen. Okay. Um, following that, you'll notice here it goes straight from just this image and then a quick shift to the second one. So if you go to transitions here, you can choose what transition you want between the two images or two videos, the, the video clips, whatever the case may be. So you might have, okay, let's try out. You just click and drag. And then now you'll see here, that's what that is. Okay, I'm not a big fan. Let's try fade to black. Click and drag to replace it. And then just test it now. Okay, I like that one better. If you want to just swap, Right? So you can just choose whichever approach you like for the transition rather than having the quick shift. Of course, it's up to you to decide how to do that. Okay, so you have these two images. And then, you know, obviously this is all about video lessons. So it's going to be obviously an audio portion too. And so what I did is I used QuickTime to record an audio sample just for this tutorial. And so again, you go ahead and go to your documents, your downloads, or like I say B. It's right here on movie audio so you click and you drag it and you could place it wherever you want I'm going to place it at the very beginning then exit out of here and now you can see the audio clip now you'll notice that there's a lot of blank space here and then the audio begins because that's when I started talking so here's how you do this you click into what you want to edit so I'm going to go all the way here click that and then con command B splits the clip into two but I'm going to click and delete the blank set, you know portion of it and then move this up and so as you can see here's me talking okay and obviously my audio is much longer than the images that's fine oh. okay uh, so you just go and then you see here this is my signal that I made an error in the first portion of what I said so that's me, I literally just did like a popping noise with my mouth and it causes this, you know, spike. 
So I know, okay, I made an error before here. And so what I can do is I can just click con Command-B. And now I split the clip again. So I can click that and delete. And I once again drag it forward to be underneath the images. Okay. Um, and so you can also, if you have just a little bit of extra, you can click on the edge and drag it. And then it's closer to when you actually are speaking. Okay. And so you have that here and the audio is going on right here. Uh, you can also see, obviously, that there's already four minutes in me talking. So I actually said a lot about these two images because I went over what was included in them and the fact that they're, you know, this one for Loom. You know, I talk about why they're my favorite features and how they function. So I have that video linked below in case you're interested. And this one as well, you know, the five icebreakers for online classes. And I have a blog post video on that. I'll link those two. I basically went over it for quite a while. And so what you can do here is you can say, okay, well, Let's see if I go here. I'm speaking for quite a bit. I'm speaking for quite a bit. And then eventually, eventually you get to here, and then you notice this blank space. So that was me thinking in between slides. So I know that this is the end of the first image. And this is when I start talking about the next image. So click that, control B. And now I click the blank part in between and delete it. So once it's deleted, you'll see a blank space in between the two. So you click and you drag it right behind it. So it connects. And so now I know where the second image begins. So when I go back over here, all the way back, I can go ahead and this bar I can make it smaller so it's a tighter or just depending on when you want to edit a lot of errors and you know spaces out between it I like going big so I know exactly what I need to cut but to see it all at once and know you know okay so I know that this clip is the first image and this one is the second one I can go ahead click and drag and I can make sure that, that it aligns this aligning. So now I'm going to open this up a bit so I can be a bit more exact. Click and drag. And then yes. So there it's clicked. And now this one, make longer. Make longer. All the way to the edge here. Okay. Um, and you can see I have blank space here as well. So if I wanted to cut that out, I can do so. Okay, and so now I have my two images with the sound for each of them. So that's kind of a very simple way of how you add images or video clips and then audio to a, you know, movie that you're creating. And so you'll notice here, I'll go ahead and play it. So in this video, I go over the main features of Loom Pro, which is free for teachers and students. So I really like it as a tool to use in my classroom. And so I have here just like a top features in my opinion there's more than just these but for example when you create the video okay so that was just a little clip of it of me speaking and so you had that here other things to know you can see the volume here of me speaking I felt that was a good you know volume but if let's say I'm, it's too loud you can just go ahead and click this center little line here and go down and you can lower how, how loud you're speaking, or you can go up to make yourself louder. So, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay, so you have that there. Now, let's say you want to make, like, a, emphasize a point that you're making. And just for an example, maybe something I say right here is particularly important. And so what you can do is you can go to audio. And you can click one of these sounds. And so I like this one, the bell transition. And I use it when I have my ever, ever educating logo in recent videos. So again, I click and I drag and I place it right there. And so now when I, it, it happens, so here, the fairy tale. And then the smart. Okay. 
okay. too loud for you, you know, that little twinkling sound, again, you could click and you can move it to whatever, you know, degree you want. And so you can have that. So I think keep in mind, iMovie is pretty simple. So you can't have too many layers here. So you have here the image, you have a little, you know, audio addition, and then you have the actual, you know, voiceover. Transitions are easy as well, but one thing I haven't said yet is titles. I mentioned this in the other video that I have about, you know, iMovie, but, you know, titles you have here. So let's say you want to emphasize a point here. So right over here, you can click one of these titles and it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, so maybe you want to emphasize a point in the bottom. So click and drag that, right? And so here it is. It appears. You click into it and you change what you're saying, right? So maybe example one, remember or whatever. And so you have that there. And then, you know, when it plays, it shows that information, okay? And you can decide the length of it as well by clicking into it and saying, I want it to be longer than four seconds, right? Or shorter, whatever the case may be, okay? But then you can't add even more layers on top of it, right? So you can't add more text on top of this text because there's already a second layer, it can't be done, okay? Um, so if you had, let's say, an image that you wanted to add on top of what you're saying here, so maybe I go here and go to my downloads, Let's just use this picture that I used for my other video about using QuickTime. And so I have this image here, and that's fine, but you can also align it here. It's fine because the title and the image is different. But then again, I can't have more than one image on top of my video. It only allows two layers of this type of addition, okay? So you can add together different types, right? The title, the second image, the audio, etc. But you can't have two titles one top of the other. You can't have two images one top of the other. Okay? So that's one limitation of iMovie. Now, something to mention. So I've added this image on top and you notice it does that Ken Burn thing again where it zooms in in this case. So it also takes over the whole screen. So let me show you that. So I'm here and then it switches, right, the whole screen and it does that effect. So how to fix that? You click the image and then first, you want to go again to crop and just say, let's say for here, crop to fit. And so this shows you where it, it would appear, what would appear on the screen. So let's say I want it to be right here. I click enter and it zooms in in that way. Okay. Um, but again, I'm going to use crop to fit because I like that. Click enter. So what you do here, this is an important one. This first one is overlay settings. So when you click in, you can decide this is cutaway where it's the whole screen. But then you can also do split screen, okay? So the image is on one side and then the regular image is on the other, okay? The one that I use most often is picture in picture, okay? So then in this case, you go ahead and you change the size of the second image, how it will appear. So you have here, and I play that, you have it, and then it appears on the screen, and then it disappears from the screen. And once again, you can decide how long and where this image appears. Um, it's up to you to decide. You can also, if you click into it, and you go to the effects, there's none currently, but you can always add a filter if you want to, to the image. I see no need to do that, but it is obviously an option if you want to make a bit more, you know, additions to what you're, what you're writing here. So those are, you know, some basics of using iMovie, right? So you just edit out areas where you made mistakes or where there's a lot of space of you not saying anything while you're thinking. You can add transitions in between different images or video clips. You can add images on top of the main video. You can add titles on top of the main video. You can add little sound effects, right? Um, so there's definitely a lot you can do with the software and it's pretty user friendly. You know, this is definitely the basics, but you know, I think this is way more than enough to create some really engaging video content for your students. And so of course, I just use static images along with audio um, because it's very easy to do. Let's say you have just a PowerPoint slide and you just add those, each slide into this to create a movie. Um, but of course, you can also have actual video clips that you just edit out to of, of you speaking on camera or wherever the case may be. 
So you can also create Loom videos, and if you want to make special effects to them, you just download them onto your computer and then upload them onto iMovie. One final tip. So let's go to the end here and add a video. So an actual video rather than just images that I have currently. So I'll add that one in here. Okay, so in here, will you, let's say for just for example, from here, so control B to here, you've been talking about something and then you start typing out like an example for a writing student or a literature student. And you're just typing an example of a literary analysis. Obviously, it can take some time to think about what you want to say and type it out, etc. And so your student is staring at you typing things out for like five minutes. Obviously, they're going to be very bored. They just want to get to the point when you start talking about what you've just written out. So what you can do is you can just cut out that portion, click into it, and go to the speed right here. And rather than normal, you can speed it up or slow it down. So you're going to go fast, and then it can be two times faster, four times, eight times, or you can do a custom one as well to make it even faster. So let's say you do eight times as fast. Now this clip is much shorter, right? Because when it was normal, it was 38 seconds. When you did fast times eight, it's 19. Times 20, it's one, or two seconds. So, you know, you can go ahead and say, you know, you speed up through it, and then when you're talking about what we just written or a chemical reaction that actually finally occurred, you can start talking here, and they're not waiting for you to get to the point. And so that's one way of, you know, increasing the speed or slowing down the speed, if you want to, of a certain portion of your video. Once you have it all curated, right, you're going to go ahead and, you know, you can go back to projects, and then it'll ask you to give it a title so it's saved. Um, but you can also just do on the right here, you can go ahead and share it, and you create it, you can make it a video file that's saved onto your computer. And so you can give it a name, you can give a description if you want to, and you can choose the resolution and the quality and how you compress it. I usually do high quality and compress faster, but you can also do better quality if you want it to be even better quality. But as you can see, it's already huge. Okay, these are huge files, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it simple. One reason there's such a huge file is because these images are PNGs rather than JPEGs, so they're very large. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but I like that they're you know, very uh, sharp because they're PNGs. But that's up to you to decide. And so once you do that, you click Next, and it saves onto your, com your computer. And it can take a while, you know, depending on how it goes. So iMovie was one of the many tools that I mentioned in the PDF down below about EdTech tools that you might want to try. And if you have any questions or comments about this one in particular, go ahead and comment below and let me know. Or if you have any ideas of how it can be used in really interesting ways when you're teaching uh, next week while we'll be in new videos. But until then, I hope you found this one enjoyable. Please do click like and subscribe if it was so.